Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Corey Cruz from Cruz Reviews. Thanks for joining me today. Today, I am in Southern Indiana and we're going to do a review of the Caesars Southern Indiana Casino. So let's go. Okay, so I am here inside the casino and just want to give you my first thoughts. My first thoughts is um, the casino is really nice. Um, it's like brand new. I think it's only been open for a year or so. It used to be something called like the Horseshoe and it was actually on the Ohio River, but uh, they changed the gaming laws in Indiana and now it's on the land and it is much nicer. Um, so my first thoughts are it's great. Um, in terms of what you want in a casino, it's gonna have everything. It's got sports betting, it's got roulette, it's got craps, it's got live games, it's got video poker, it's got so much stuff. There, there's even a poker room, which at some of these smaller resorts, sometimes you don't see that. The other huge thing is they have a massive amount of the floor dedicated to non-smoking, which is awesome. Uh, so if you are kind of turned off by that smoke smell, it is much lighter here than anywhere else I've ever been. Just simply because like I almost half the floor is non-smoking. So that includes slots, that includes table games, everything. The other thing I really liked about it just from walking around um, is there are a wide variety of gaming options, but also gaming prices. So I found like video, uh, blackjack, and the electronic craps and the electronic roulette for as little as $2 minimums. And I'm here on a weekend in the middle of the day, but I'm here on a weekend. Uh, so that is really affordable. Now, if you want a live dealer, the table games are less affordable. They're like uh, 15 to $25 minimums, still reasonable for such a nice place. Um, and I also like that it's, it's pretty small. It's like medium size. So it's a much more approachable. You don't have a ton of crowds and everything like that. You can tell a lot of locals, but they also have a large hotel here. Um, so a lot of people probably coming in just for the weekend to enjoy the casino. So a really common question that I get from people is like, what's the drink situation like at a casino, right? We all know that if you go to Vegas, or maybe you don't know, but if you go to Vegas and you're sitting down gambling, they will bring you free cocktails, they'll bring you free beer, uh, they'll bring you free Coca-Cola, whatever you want, they're gonna bring it to you for free, you just tip the waitress. Um, however, at most other casinos outside of Vegas, drinks are not free and that's the case here. So if you want a beer or if you want some wine or you want a whiskey, you're gonna be paying for that. Now, in non-COVID times, I do see they have like free fountain drinks, but the fountain drinks are cut off because of COVID. Uh, so usually Coke and things like that, you can just go up to the fountain 
and get whatever you want, which is, is kind of nice. Uh, so that includes coffee as well. Uh, so you know, check back in a you know a couple months, and that might that might change a little bit. It might be reopened, uh, but it is nice that at least the non-alcoholic drinks are free. But you will have to pay for your alcohol, and it is not going to be super cheap. One other thing that I noticed here that I think is great, especially for mid sized casino, I'm actually sitting in their like lounge club area right now, which is open during the day. Uh, and it's like right off the casino floor. So it looks like they had a band here last night, uh, which is pretty cool. So there are like entertainment options here. There is a food court, there is a steakhouse. I think there's a burger bar around here somewhere. I'll try to get some footage of but there are a lot of options for you if you want to come around here and uh, gaming is not your thing, right? So one of you, one person in your party wants to gamble and the other doesn't, there are other things to do around here. Now, outside of the casino, there is nothing. It's like eight miles away from basically anything. So don't think, oh, I can just pop down to the store or something like that. No, once you're here, you're pretty much here. Now, if you have access to a car, like most people would in this situation, uh, you can drive down to New Albany. It's about a 10 minute drive and you will find more restaurants, more bars. It's a nice little like riverside town. So that's not a bad option, but there is enough here that if you're just here for the weekend, you probably will not need to leave. As far as COVID goes, they encourage masks, but they are not required here. And I'd say it's about 20, 25% of people are wearing masks. So while it's not smoking, uh, you, if you are concerned about COVID, uh, you can wear a mask. There are certainly people wearing them, but you might be sitting right next to somebody who is not. So take that into consideration uh, when you come here. Lastly, let me just make a quick plug here. I have, I'm not staying here this weekend, but I actually have stayed here twice before. And I would say it's like a six out of 10 hotel, or at least when I stayed here. Now they may have renovated, it was clean. It was just like a little bit dated. Some people don't really care about that. And I do know they actually have smoking um, rooms in this hotel, which is unique. So if you do book, make sure that you uh, request smoking or non-smoking. And also just keep in mind that this is not like a luxury hotel. Um, if you are like a Hilton Honors or a Marriott person, um, understand that there are some uh, like Hampton Inns and, and Marriott's and stuff about 10 minutes down the road. So if you want to make a weekend out of this, but you don't necessarily want to stay at the hotel, there are options relatively close by. So there you have it guys. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel or hit the like button for more just like this. We'll see you next time.